Hi all, welcome to our feature that celebrates women in tech. Uh, I'm Jovana and today we're celebrating more than just that because our colleague Masha, who is with us today, uh, just got featured in Forbes. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, HTAC group with Masha leading this uh, project uh, got attention around our collaboration with the medtech company from uh, Minnesota uh, called Marani Health and the famous uh, Mayo Clinic. Uh, Masha spoke to Forbes uh, as one of the main contributors uh, to the great success that this prenatal monitoring solution for pregnant women and their unborn babies has had uh, in the previous couple of months, especially in the United States, but it's starting to corroborate around the world as well. Um, so, but we'll get, um, we'll get to that a bit later. Uh, let me first present uh, Masha. Uh, she joined HTEC's HR team. Uh, and back then, she worked together with another colleague of ours, uh, uh, Mina, uh, on HTEC's employer branding uh, campaign, which was uh, at its very beginning back then. And a couple uh, months later, she got an irresistible and very unexpected opportunity uh, to join uh, our project management team. Uh, on one of the uh, of, of one of HTEC's first in-house med tech uh, uh, projects solutions called the uh, Humeds, which is a telehealth solution uh, which enables simple and comfortable uh, ECG recording and analysis combined with a real-time, automatic, and precise uh, diagnosis of cardiac arrhythmias. So this is where the fun starts. Uh, hi, Marcia, and thanks for being my guest with today. Hi, Joanna. Thank you for having me. And you are giving me too much publicity these days, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to this. I was not ready for this. Just so you, you know. deserve it. <laughs> Better get ready. <laughs> there will be more. Um, so to start with, I wanted to know... Um, about uh, this uh, this strange and unexpected career path that you had at HTEC. How did you end up in project management? So when I first joined HTEC, um, HTEC was a um, much smaller company than now. I think there was around 100 employees back at the time. Um, and um, there was a real uh, battle over there in the employees market for the engineers as, um, as IT industry uh, was growing really fast. And then uh, after I realized that uh, not so many uh, people in the industry know uh, actually uh, about uh, HTEC, you know, and everything that we are doing here. So I started working with Mina on employer branding and one uh, of the things we were, wanted also to work on is, uh, of course, humans branding as well. So humans was, uh, at the time it was startup, is it was HTEC um, internal project. And one of the first things that I was working on was developing a humans website. Um, and back at the time, I was working on this with the art designer, uh, one developer, and also QA. And that this was actually a first first project of mine. It was really small, and back at the time, I was probably not aware that I'm managing a, a small, you know, uh, development project. My goal was to uh, get this website done so we can, you know, pursue all our marketing activities and also uh, put humans out there, boost. Uh, be present on social media, in, in the news, in, and, and etc. Um, well, soon after that, uh, I believe I, I remember there was a need to to develop an iOS app for humans. There was already an Android application, but there was no iOS app developed at the time. And Serki, who was in charge of, of humans and leading all the humans initiative initiatives asked me to help him. He brought me to, to one meeting uh, and there were, I think, two or three developers um, in, in that small team at the time. Uh, and we started talking about what's needed, you know, for, for um, starting up, uh, kicking off uh, with developing this app. It was spontaneous. I started, you know, 
talking to them. We were discussing all the requirements. We were dis discussing what needs to be done, um, what kind of support we need, how many team members we need. And um, we continue, you know, developing this app. And a couple of months later, we had it published. So um, uh, one, one step after another, um, well, I think after maybe a couple months, couple months later, there, there was a real, a real team of engineers um, with me, with QAs, with mobile developers, with backend engineer developing, uh, you know, one amazing app uh, for, for humans. Um, and I realized this is really, you know, exciting. I enjoy working with those people. Uh, I'm surrounded by so many smart engineers that are doing this amazing, amazing job. So it was really inspiring. And, and also, of course, it was challenging. It was, it was tough. I was learning a lot on my own mistakes, but I was really happy because at, at the time I uh, really jumped out of my comfort zone. After a couple of months uh, working on, on, on this in parallel with those employer branding and marketing activities I did, I was talking to Serki and I told him, okay, I like this. I'd like to switch full time, you know, to working on this. I see um, there, is a, there is a lot of work that still needs to be done for humans. There are other initiatives. Uh, there are, there's machine learning parts. There is, uh, I don't know, web app at the time. There was a need for redesigning those mobile apps. So that's how it all started. Wow. And with no previous tech or medical experience, <laughs> yeah, you just right. jumped right into this very like complex and novel uh, project that was demanding both in terms of technology that was being developed, but also like this deeply medical uh, subject matter that was researched and and HTEC was uh, was one of the pioneers in in this kind of a solution yeah. uh, so it's just uh, really really brave <laughs> brave of you but I'm sure you had uh, support from the team and the colleagues and and you know like working together as a team who That's else did you did you collaborate with to to create humans yeah, that's right. I had a great team. I was actually sitting in the same room with those engineers that developed humans from, from the beginning, both from mobile apps, from hardware to machine learning uh, and, and embedded systems. So um, I, um, I learned so much from all of them. And um, that, was, that was a great thing also for me uh, in this job that I was learning like every day. I'm still learning every day so much from them. Uh, and they were definitely uh, the great help and great support, you know, for me uh, and also uh, in, in this whole journey of, I say, my whole journey here in HTEC, definitely. Uh, they were really uh, kind. They were really, uh, I don't know, they were so, uh, all of them were so enthusiastic about building this. I think all of us were thinking of humans, you know, as our own at the time and we, we had a really really great collaboration working all together um, and of course the purpose of, of the of the product is really amazing we were testing it all the time on ourselves you know we were detecting uh, some um, arrhythmias from from patients and so it, every, the, the whole story the whole uh, uh, impact of, of the product is really really amazing and I think that's what also is driving this team and and you had great success i think there both in terms of promoting it and also development because yeah. here in serbia when when people when people think age tech most of them think humans because this is our most famous product and and i when i was uh, interviewed for a job at HTEC, I remember one of my friends saying, oh, that's the company that created that very cool ECG <laughs> device. Yeah, for... right. so, so yeah, so, can, can you tell us just a little bit about what, uh, what exactly this Humids is? Uh, okay, so now I'm sad uh, that I don't have it right now next to me, but it's a small device that communicates with your mobile app uh, from which you can obtain ECG signals from yourself. It's intended for everyone who has any cardiac 
um, issues or uh, is facing, I don't know, any type of irregular heart rhythm um, so that uh, you can just, you know, take it out of your pocket. You can record your ECG anytime, anywhere in like 30 seconds. You can upload that signal and that signal is automatically sent to your doctor. So it's remote monitoring solution. The idea, uh, there, there are also machine learning algorithms that are automatically detecting if something is not right and providing the alarm to both patients and doctors. But of course, the, the idea is not to replace doctor with, with it. The idea is to have this whole system where the patients are assigned to their doctors so they can, you know, uh, con they can be monitored, they can be um, uh, um, all, all the time uh, communicating about the next steps, if everything's right, if they need to go to the appointment. But the whole idea is to catch those arrhythmias at the moment they happen, actually, because the, the, the biggest uh, challenge and biggest issue with uh, irregular heart rhythm is uh, that symptoms occur you know, from time to time. They happen for, I don't know, a couple of minutes or they're within an hour and until you get your doctor's appointment, they're gone. And people uh, are leaving, you know, without their diagnosis because it's so difficult to catch those symptoms. Mm -hmm. And humans is actually, you know, resolving this, this issue. That's amazing. So it's helping, it's helping both the doctor and the patient. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, and so now that we're at the topic of, 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 of these devices that HTEC is such a, such a pioneer in actually implementing them, uh, uh, the, this dry electrode technology that enables uh, 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 immediate recordings without hard wires. Mm -hmm. And um, so as mentioned earlier, uh, Forbes has just published an article about HTEC's collaboration with Marani Health and the uh, Mayo Clinic, which is the, the world's number one, one clinic. And this is another similar device, I would say, uh, but it's used in a different, uh, in a different uh, category, let's say. So uh, I would like to hear more from you about how, uh, how HTEC got to work on this project. And then also, uh, how does your uh, collaboration with Marani and Mayo Clinic look like? So mm -hmm. to hear a bit more about this story. Yeah, I think uh, our coll collaboration and our partnership actually started uh, thanks to Humans. Humans was a reference uh, because uh, when uh, Marani started, you know, uh, uh, working on this solution and um, talking to, you know, different doctors, doing research, they also found uh, orbital research dry electrodes and they decided to use them. And those electrodes are the same one that we are um, using in Humans. So you mentioned um, they're actually uh, enabling, you know, catching those ECG signals without any hard wires or any uh, skin preparation before. So um, they actually, the orbital research actually uh, recommended us to Marani. And that's how we met. Uh, that's how we started the conversation. Um, and uh, at some point, I, I, uh, I remember... Uh, maybe two years ago, Cirque first introduced me to, to Anne and Kathy. Uh, we started the conversation. We were starting, started, you know, thinking about the potential solution, um, working on some proof of concepts here. A uh, couple months later, after I first met them, I think on a, on a call, um, they um, came here in Belgrade. We met. Uh, we met here. We were on uh, on uh, two two day intensive meetings, uh, and um, I think that's how it all started. Um, it was um, it was great privilege and uh, an honor to the whole team that was working um, on Humets uh, to kind of you know continue the development in the same domain and apply the expertise and and experience we got uh, on Humets uh, to to Marani project. Only um, this time it went on a much bigger scale. You worked with the yeah. best clinicians in the world. We, of course, yeah. Well, the thing is that uh, our clients are, you know, uh, partnered with Mayo. You, you probably heard of 
Mayo as one of the most famous hospitals in the world. Um, but this time we were developing, what's also important to mention, we, we are developing the solution for pregnant moms. Uh, comparing to humans, we are now developing the solution that is extracting both maternal and fetal ECG signals and providing information about babies and mom's heart rates. And that's one whole, um, you know, another level of, of this, uh, of, the, of our uh, development and, and uh, the work we have done in this domain. Yeah, that's such a nice uh, cause to work for, actually. Yes, it is. And you have some numbers. Uh, uh, I read, I read about this that there is so th that the mortality rate uh, is still so so very high, uh, even in the developed countries like the U.S. Uh, at at the childbirth and. There are many complications that happen uh, during pregnancy. So uh, just having the option to actually monitor uh, your, uh, your vital signs and your fetuses vital signs, it, it's, uh, I think, such a revolution in this uh, prenatal um, medicine. But um, yes, it maybe you can tell, tell us a bit more about uh, why is it so revolutionary? Like, what are the technologies we have today? And then what is Marani, uh, together with HTAC and Mayo Clinic, bringing to, to the world? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, it's, it's really uh, an innovative product uh, since, uh, first of all, it will be a tele telemonitoring solution. So the fact that moms could, uh, you know, start their monitoring session from their home and that results could be sent over to their doctors, you know, um, and they could uh, provide them, them feedback, let them know if everything's fine or not, or they should, um, uh, you know, do some meet at the hospital or whatever. Um, that, that, that's the first thing. So, you know, that so many women in US are, are, are living in rural areas and they don't have the access to doctors like we have here. Um, in high risk pregnancies, it's very important to keep moms monitored a lot often than, than in regular pregnancies. Now in COVID, in this COVID crisis, you know, that where doctors are so over, overwhelmed with COVID patients, a lot of moms don't even have the opportunity to go to their doctor's appointments on a regular basis. So those are uh, some issues that, that the, this product will, uh, will help, you know, overcome and will help so many, so many women and their babies, I'm sure, across the globe. Um, on the other hand, it's collecting ECG signals. So we are gathering ECG signals that are the most precise uh, source of uh, moms and babies heart rates. And it's also so, so good uh, basis for uh, artificial intelligence uh, and for, um, you know, providing the, the um, information to doctors on time and predicting some potential outcomes um, based on based on those um, ECG signals collected during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So what's also really cool about this project that, that all the women that are driving it, are, all all the people that are driving it are women. So you mentioned Anne. E. Holder, the CEO. There, yeah, there are Anne and Kathy. They're two so inspirational women. Um, Anne founded the company um, after after years of experience in med tech industry on different executive position, um, and has founded her own company. Apart from that, and has four kids, uh, which is so so inspiring for one to see. You know, for one a young woman like me, I'm admiring all the women. Uh, that are, uh, you know, so successful in their jobs and they're owning their own companies, but they also, you know, uh, take care of their families. They have big families and also, you know, uh, find, uh, find happiness in everything what they're doing. That's, that's truly, truly inspiring to me. Do you um, have kids as well? No, no, I don't. <laughs> Not yet. Too one young. Day. Yeah. One day. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, that's really inspiring. And they're both um, 
very, very uh, intelligent, smart women. They are so tech savvy. They are understanding the technology so well, um, and they're they're really amazing partners. That's great to hear. I also met them uh, by not by chance, but <laughs> uh, as we had the. Um, we have uh, one of our marketing initiatives called Fast Forward, uh, where we interviewed an uh, e-holder for, for, for this. Uh, uh, and if, if anyone uh, cares, uh, you can, you can uh, check it out on HTEC's website, uh, Fast Forward, it's mm -hmm. called. Uh, and is, and is, yeah, and is awesome. Yeah. And if you could name, if you could name like one thing that you like the most about working on this project, uh, what would that be? Well, it's probably the the purpose, you know, of the product and the whole idea behind it and the impact that um, we are all sure that it will make on healthcare, on prenatal care. Um, the fact that uh, something like this doesn't exist, you know. Um, and the fact that it's so innovative um, and will bring such a huge change, but and eventually save lives um, is really, really inspiring. And the next steps for this, uh, for this product solution, uh, do you have some uh, ideas? Well, while we are now, uh, well, validating the product internally, we are in the same time preparing for the FDA submission. This will be a huge step. So we are preparing for the clinical trials. Um, there's a, also a huge, huge amount of work done from the quality and regulatory team from, uh, from Marani. Um, while we are now, uh, you know, continuing the development, we are resolving some, some um, issues, we are improving the product, we are testing, we are iterating, we are making sure it works properly, and we are preparing for the trials. Um, there's also a great amount of work done on the other hand with the clinics in US, uh, preparing the field for us, preparing everything that's needed to, to run the trials on, on, a, on, couple, on couple of, of different sites and a couple of different clinics over in US. So we are all very, very, you know, uh, excited about it because as soon after we receive the FDA, the product can be used uh, among moms, uh, from hospitals, among a lot of, uh, from doctors, uh, monitoring nurses, and it can be, you know, out there, help out uh, those that need it mostly. That's really cool. This is also my favorite <laughs> HTEC project so far. <laughs> uh, if, if anyone uh, listening to, to, to us today uh, cares about uh, uh, learning more uh, about this, this product, uh, you, can find, uh, you can find more information either on HTEC website or, or on Forbes or on Marani website as well. Um, okay, so... Um, to, to finish off, uh, uh, we always ask these questions uh, to, all, to all our guests here. Uh, what uh, uh, advice would you give to uh, women considering a career in the tech industry? Something that you wish you had known back then? Well, I don't know if there's something I wish I had known, but... I would tell them be brave, uh, get out of your comfort zone. Um, if you are young engineers, um, keep learning, keep growing. You know, be always uh, upfront the latest trends, latest technologies. Uh, keep improving yourself, your skills, um, and um, find you know uh, find an inspiration and set up a goal for yourselves because. Um, there, there are so many opportunities out there and um, everything is possible. Yes, each tech uh, motto is the art of possible. <laughs> so we're in the business. Sometimes we say that we're in the business of making things possible, even when they seem not possible. <laughs> that's right. And that's also what's really, really great about what we are doing. There is so much opportunity today and the, the world is connected. So 
uh, no matter where you're from, where you where you grew up, you can you know still end up being the CEO of Google. <laughs> Let's say that's right. That's right. That's right. That's very cool. Okay, well, thanks, Masha, for for your time and for the great story that you shared with us. I hope you have uh, uh, many, many more successes and cool projects to drive and work on and uh, see see you around. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thanks for having me. Talk sure. to you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye.